and welcome to the Chrissy B Show, when in celebration of the launch of the Games and with the whole world tuned in to this summer's events, this show will be dedicated to the Olympics. But even if you're not a big sports fan, I'm sure this show will still interest you when you hear about the guests that I have with me tonight. We have Ali Campbell, one of the world's leading life coaches. He's an advisor to celebrities, business leaders and royalty around the world, and he'll be revealing some tips to improve your sport performance. But I'm not... <laughs> this music. <laughs> Can you hear the music? Do you like it? But you may be saying, I'm not actually an athlete. But don't worry, these tips can be applied by anyone that wants to be more successful. We're also going to have Emma Jane Brown, the most popular former international show jumper of Great Britain, who won the Ladies National Championship just aged 20. And also we have Alex Bonick, who's a young man that is training hard for the 2016 Olympics. Each guest will be sharing secrets on how to be a champion. And as always, on Wednesday, we have, no, Friday, actually, we have Lisa Marie Bradnock, our in-house fashion advisor, who will be showing us the latest Olympics fashion. Don't forget, if you want more information about the show, visit our website, chrissybshow.tv, to tweet, Chrissy B Show, or follow on Facebook, The Chrissy B Show. And you can also call, don't forget, on 020-7686-6300. Now, we are live, so you can call at any point of the programme. I just hope people are watching, because we kind of thought maybe everyone's watching the opening ceremony. But maybe there's some that, you know, you're not interested in the opening ceremony, I hope. Never mind. <laughs> but before we start our chat with our first guest, let's take a look at the first video of some footage of the Olympic torch travelling through North London. Turnpike Lane today to watch the Olympic torch walk past us any moment now. As you can see, there's lots of people here today. They've all come down to see history in the making. The route today for the Olympic torch relay route has been from Harrow to Alexandra Palace. We've gone through Harrow, Sudbury Hill, Wembley, Kingsbury, Hendon, Finchley, Whetstone, Free and Barnet, New Southgate, Southgate, Winchmore Hill, Edmonton, Tottenham, Wood Green, and Alexandra Palace. The name of the Olympic opening ceremony show will be the Isle of Wonder and the worldwide broadcast will commence at 9pm on Friday. And it's on right now. So let's introduce our first guest who is Ali Campbell. Good evening, Ali. Hey, how are you? Thanks so much for joining us. Pleasure. Um, well, thank you. So tell, tell the viewers what you do and how you got into the line of work that you do. Well, you know, my keep the Olympic theme going. I think it's probably <laughs> probably useful for tonight. Yeah. Is I, I actually was a, a an international athlete uh, many years ago, okay. uh, training for the Sydney Games back in uh, 2000. So I'm mm -hmm. kind of giving my age away a little bit. Here. Oh. <coughs> I'm, I'm not that fast. We'll try and play it down. It'll be all right. <laughs> and um, three knee operations later, I oh. uh, I couldn't compete anymore. What were we actually competing? Um, I was a middle distance runner. Okay. And uh, and ran you know ran internationally. And the Olympics was like you know literally I would have given my life. Oh to have been in that yeah. stadium. You know, it was just, it was the be all and end all yeah. for me completely. And a lot of the guys who are, you know, who are there and, and having the honor of competing can feel exactly like that. Mm -hmm. But you know, then I, I discovered, I was a personal trainer when I, when I couldn't run anymore, but then got into more of the psychological side of performance mm -hmm. um, with uh, neuro-linguistic programming and hypnotherapy and life coaching and, and personal development. Mm -hmm. And found that, you know, a lot of the things, that, a lot of the attributes that I would take as an athlete, as a, as, I mean, as a full-time athlete, mapped brilliantly across into daily life. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, absolutely, you know. And, and of course, most people think that, you know, I work with celebrities and, and you know, rock stars and royalty and all those kind of people now, but actually, the most rewarding work that I do, and, and actually the, the people who it probably applies most to, are just normal, everyday, everyday people. people. I, was, I was asking them, Ali that before because I was wondering, is there really a difference like, between helping like, the celebrities and the stars and helping like, the, your average Joe, for example? I mean, I yes, there's very different lifestyles, of, mm -hmm. of course, but you know, in terms of the problems and, and the issues that people have in their daily life, yeah. all celebrity does really is, is takes a normal problem and turns it all the way up. Yeah. You know, and, and so you, you know, read yeah. newspapers about, you know, these celebrities behaving like this or behaving like that. And it, it really just the, the, the pressure on the media just, yeah, just exacerbates things. Yeah. And, uh, but no, I, you know, what I do now is, is working with those people and mm. normal people who, you know, be watching the show tonight. And just a question, when you injured yourself, how did you actually cope with 
with that and like, really like badly. mentally and stuff. Really badly. Really badly. Yeah, because it, it, it was everything. Mm -hmm. You know, it, and, and here's, here's the thing, it wasn't just about athletic performance, it was my self-worth. You know, I felt good about me because I was the fastest guy in the room mm -hmm. or, you know, I, or the fittest guy in the room. And do you know what? You, you'll find that that maps across into every area of life. You get people who check in with something to let them know that they're OK. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm OK if my bank balance is X. Yeah, yeah. I'm OK if my Which kids are healthy. Which is not a healthy thing, is it? Because... Because I think I, was, I remember saying on, on a previous show that sometimes people base everything on what their reputation or what they yeah. can do or how much they earn. But if they lose that, then what do they have? So Absolutely. I was thinking that it's all to do with your, the person's character, their personality. Exactly. That's, exactly. Yeah. And, and, you know, my, my thing in, in uh, you know, Just Get On With It, my, the, the best selling of my books, was yeah. if you check in with anything outside of you, you've got it the wrong way around. So true. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'll check in with being OK. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I don't need anything to, to be OK. Yeah, OK. Now, I know you've got some tips for us about how to improve sport performance. And just to clarify with the viewers, you say, I'm not an athlete. I don't intend to be an athlete. I'm not even into sports. But these tips you've could be applied. You've got four years to the next games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, OK, if you want to do that instead. <laughs> or if you've injured yourself and you can't, for example. But you, these, these tips can be applied to everyday life. So yeah, you're going to share some with us. Of them. course they do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the first of the tips... It, it, it's really about motivation. You know, most of the common questions that I get asked as a life coach is, you know, how can I get motivated to do something? Well, the truth is that if you're struggling with motivation, chances are it's not something you really want to do anyway. It's something you think you should do. Because I've, I've never met anyone yet who would struggle for the motivation to go and pick up their lottery winnings. <laughs> it just doesn't work like mm -hmm. that. You know, they don't need yeah. to come and have a pep talk because I can't be bothered going to cash the check. So... Ask yourself this, if you're struggling for motivation, ask yourself is it something you really want to do or whether it's just something you think you mm. should do. And know whether you're a towards motivated person or whether you're an away from motivated person. Now, there's no right or wrong. Now, although I was, a, I was an international athlete, I was very much an away from pain kind of guy. Mm -hmm. So the thing that would get me out of bed, the thing that would motivate me in the morning to go and train wouldn't be glory or Olympic gold medals or, you know, somebody patting me on the back. It was the same thought every morning. And the thought was, if I don't get up and run, someone else will. And when we race, they'll beat me and they'll deserve mm -hmm. to beat me and I'll be letting myself down. So it's very much an away from pain yeah. motivation strategy. Okay. Other people are very much towards pleasure. Oh, if I, if I do this, then good things will happen. Now, there's no right or wrong. There's just you. As long as you want what you're going for. As long as you yeah. want, and it's not something you think you should yeah, you have, think you should. then okay. there, there is no right or wrong. It's just the way that you're wired up. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, most, most people are actually far more away from pain than they are mm -hmm. towards pleasure. OK. Right, on the next Top tip, tip number one. <laughs> okay. Top tip number two is, is only, ever, um, only ever run positive visualisations. So, you know, things that you actually want. Concentrate on what you want, not what you don't want. You know, because again, when I'm working with clients, they'll give me this big long list of things that they don't want in their life. Well, your brain can't tell between imagined and reality. So if you're setting up a list of the things that you don't want, you can't process the negative. So in order to not think of something, you have to think of it first, then take it away. It, it, your brain simply cannot process a negative. Mm -hmm. So if you set it up that way, you're only ever going to have images in your head of things that you don't want. And why would you do that yeah. to yourself? <laughs> Makes that makes sense. no sense, you know. <laughs> yeah. now, but but you know everybody everybody does it, mm -hmm. and and this applies not only if you're you know an Olympic athlete, but if you're just you know if you're a, a mum who's got three kids to get out the door and and a and a job to hold down, it doesn't make mm -hmm. any difference. So okay. uh, so that's top tip number two. Top tip number three. Now this is this is important if you're if you're the kind of person sitting at home thinking right, I want to get ahead, I want to make a difference, and I and I want to sort of be the very best me that I can be. So I'm going to change things. You know, I'm going to change my job or I'm going to change my relationship. And you find yourself in an interview situation. And, it, and you'll know this. You know, that, you know that way in an interview that you always have the perfect answer to the question <laughs> it doesn't work. just after you've left the interview. <laughs> right? I wish I'd said this or I wish I'd said that. And, and the thing about it is that if you're going to put yourself in a pressure environment and it, you know, it doesn't come any more high pressured than A, an Olympic stadium, or be that job interview when you really need the pay rise. 
you know, I, I would argue that the latter is far more pressing. If you've got a couple of kids to feed and you really need the job. Practice putting yourself under pressure and answering questions or performing because your brain needs to be conditioned to perform under the kind of stress that it's going to be under when it's going to be asked to perform at its best. Does it work though? Like say if you just get a friend, for example, to sit with you and like in really give a difficult interview? No, what I would what I would do is let's take an example. I'm, I'm going to dip into sport <coughs> just a little bit to, mm -hmm. to illustrate it. Let's say you were just a, a, an amateur golfer who goes out for a hit around on a, on a Saturday or a Sunday. There's no pressure there. There's no, yeah. there's no stress. Mm -hmm. You're just out for hitting a few golf balls around the, around the field. Mm -hmm. But what about if you start to make it matter? So I'm going to hit five good shots in a row. And you set that as your goal and you've hit four. Okay. What pressure do you feel to do the fifth? Yeah, of you course you do. Feel you feel it. it. And that's what you should do. You should mm -hmm. train yourself to perform under the kind of pressure that you're going to be on at, at the time. Yeah. OK. It's one of the reasons that footballers struggle with penalty shootouts. <laughs> Oh it's my God, they I hate those. But they don't practice <laughs> so under hard. pressure. It's so hard to watch. They yeah. practice as like, it's an afterthought on the way to the showers after mm. they've done their training. Oh yeah, we'll take some penalties. They don't expect to be there. So, <laughs> but you should... Yeah, but they, you need to practice under pressure, yeah. you know. And, and if I were a football manager, I'd do this. It's really simple. I'd take their Bentley, I'd suspend it from a crane, <laughs> and if they miss, they drop it. It's really simple. That would be good. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the All GB right. team would probably do a lot yeah. better as, as a result. So, uh, you know, okay. top... Top tip, for, uh, that would be a, a top tip for football managers. Okay, yeah, that would be good. We've and, got and time for a couple more, I think. No problem. One, one is, 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 is really key to everything you do. It doesn't matter whether it's sport or, or anything else. As, as people, we tend to do okay when we stay out of our own way for long enough. What does that mean? Well, what you'll normally find is the thing that holds people back, the thing that really holds people back, maybe you, is the stories you tell yourself in your head. It's the stories that you run over and over again about why you're no good, mm. why you're not capable, why you've never mounted anything, what somebody said when you were this age or what somebody said when you were... It's all the stuff that, that we run in our heads that, that's not true, mm -hmm. that we just make up, you know? And, and as humans, we're terrible for just making stuff up. The problem is that we believe it because we thought it. And if we thought it, it must be true. And as soon as we can avoid doing that, we automatically go back to being OK. Because being okay is your default setting. You know, mm -hmm. we come into the world calm, happy, relaxed, joyful, loving, creative. Mm -hmm. And it's over time, we, things happen and life happens and we learn to react in certain ways and we learn to tell ourselves stories that we're no good. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you stop that, you go back to the way nature intended us yeah. to be, which is okay. So, so if a person does have a lot of like, negative thoughts, would you suggest that they should like basically replace them or... You know, shoot them away immediately and like, replace them with positive things. Everyone has something right. good about now, them. Now, this is, this is where what I'm going to say is going to be a little bit controversial. Mm -hmm. If you're someone who has negative thoughts like that, the last thing in the world I want you to do is replace them with positive thoughts. Really? Yeah. What it's like dieting. Do, nobody can keep that up. Uh -huh. You know, nobody, when they're going, oh, do you know, I feel terrible, I'm not supposed to think that. I'm strong and I'm great. Mm -hmm. Nobody can keep that up. What, the distinction is different. They're just thoughts. And as soon as you realise that they're just thoughts and they're not real, it becomes a little bit like, have you ever watched a horror movie and turned the sound down? Yeah. <laughs> doesn't work, it doesn't work. Right? It just doesn't it's work. It's like it loses the power then, doesn't it? Completely it, like, loses yeah. its power. Mm -hmm. Or you, you walk, if you walked into a cinema and went, oh, horror movie, and walked straight back out again, yeah. you wouldn't get scared. Mm -hmm. It's the same with thought. It only becomes powerful when you engage with it. So, so it's like listening to it and like... Yeah. Okay, so the, so the first thing to do is just notice that the stories you're telling yourself are not true. They're just thoughts. Mm -hmm. You're just making them up. They could be true, but they're not. And stop doing it. And there's a couple of little exercises you can do that, you know, that are really very easy to, to break mm -hmm. that relationship with thought. But as soon as you do, and in a heartbeat, you automatically go back to being okay. And would that you obviously you should do it immediately, right? As soon as you realise the th the thoughts there. Exactly. If you leave it and dwell on it and start like entertaining it, if you wish. It, 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 it becomes like yeah. watching a horror movie yeah. and wondering why you're getting scared. Yeah. Well, you're getting scared because you're watching a horror movie. <laughs> it's it's really as simple as that. Yeah. And the one of the exercises that I that I get my clients to do with this, and and you know this is this is probably the most powerful technique that I ever teach. So it's, so it's worth you know it's worth sharing mm -hmm. it with you. Is to just sit somewhere relatively quiet, close your eyes, and allow thought to come to mind. Now, they will. It's not time to do your to-do list or, you know, think about anything <laughs> deliberately. It's just allow thought to come to mind. And when it does, acknowledge it as just a thought about a thing. 
and let it go. And if you sit and you do that for a couple of minutes, you'll get very used to it very quickly. Do it for 15 minutes for as long as you need to and you'll break mm -hmm. that relationship with thought forever. That's a powerful point. Ali, we've run out of time. No. I believe it. I told you the time will fly. <laughs> I want to hear the others. I'm going to get the other tips from here, <laughs> Wayne, and I'm going to maybe share them at another time with you. Thank you so much, Ali, for so that much. wonderful Thank advice. You. After the break, we'll also be talking to ex-show jumper Emma Jane Brown and Alex Bonick, who will continue giving us some handy tips for success. So join us after this break. Welcome back to tonight's show where we are speaking about the Olympics and how thinking like an athlete can benefit you very much in everyday life. Joining me on the sofa now is Emma Jane Brown, the most popular former show jumper of Great Britain, who won the Ladies National Championship of Great Britain at just age 20. I know I said that before, but I like saying it again. <laughs> and we also have Alex Vonick, who has his eyes firmly fixed on the 2016 Olympics. So just before we meet them, let's take a look at their videos. Yes, well, the, the horses, in fact, are lying first, second, third, were all clear, which um, really tells the story for itself. Jeff McFeen, in fact, was just over the 100 seconds, but then had a fence down. So we'll see how Emma Jane Mack gets on. Emma Jane, clear off there. Now she's got to take a pull down here. Ooh. And look at this, this is quick. And now she's racing for the finish. 103.99 to beat and takes a flyer. Great round, yes. She's cracked the 100 barrier. Well done. Well, this could be one of those competitions that just gets faster and faster because when they've gone as fast as Chris Ward and now Emma Jane, the first two places have gone, haven't they? So they've really got to crack on and try to do it all. These brakes aren't very good, but in a competition like this, <laughs> it doesn't matter too much because you can't afford to take too many pulls this afternoon. Look at all that talent. Now we're going to meet them in person. We have Emma Jane here and also Alex. Hello. Hi. <laughs> nice Hi. to meet you both. Nice meet Thanks you. so much for coming to the show. So we'll start off with you, Emma. So um, how, or how old were you actually when you started show jumping? I was uh, five years old when five. I was first uh, put on a pony. Wow. And I started show jumping when I was nine. Nine, gosh. Yeah. And um, I know you, you, you're not obviously doing it at the moment because you had a, an injury. Or oh, your horse died, sorry. Your yeah, horse yeah. Died just before yeah. the uh, Olympics, yeah. Mm -hmm. of, um, the Seoul Olympics, unfortunately, yeah. Okay, my then. horse died. How, how did you actually cope with that? It was very hard. Um, you worked very hard, obviously, for four years to the build-up. Mm -hmm. And um, then, of course, you know, you have to be fit yourself. And without your horse, you, you're not able to be there. And my mm -hmm. horse, unfortunately, died of uh, colic. Oh, and yeah. once that happened, you're out, that's it. You can't mm -hmm. just go and replace the horse really? because of the Olympic qualifications. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's hard to buy another horse to have a relationship. Mm -hmm. I'd produced that horse when she was five years old and then um, their prime age is nine. So oh, right, it's yeah. it had been a long relationship, having oh. a good trust with the horse. And um, it's, it's So you not... had the same horse throughout then? Yeah. Um, okay. yeah. So I produced oh. it and then obviously produced it um, from a novice level mm -hmm. up to international and um, it, it's something that takes time mm -hmm. and also you know you need this one-to-one -one with a horse it's something you just can't find it's, yeah. it's a real bond that you have yeah. to have and and before this happened how did you actually keep yourself motivated because the training must have been really difficult yeah it was it was demanding um, but it's like anything if you want to succeed you've got to be very determined you've mm -hmm. got to be very focused and you've also got to be hungry to win. You know, you've got to be wanting to be out there every morning. You've got to get up early. You've got to train in all types of weather. 
and there's loads of ups and downs that come with it and so mm -hmm. it's a physical sport but also you have to be very mentally strong to take the ups and downs of all different events. Did you have to follow a strict diet as well? Yeah I had a strict diet but you know when you do six seven hours riding a day Gosh. with riding it that really does help yeah. your, your body and mm -hmm. um, it keeps you very fit but um, no it was you know it was a hard sport but as I say anybody who wants to be successful in a sport has to know that mm. you've got to put a lot of time into it. Yeah and what are you actually doing now? Um, with your um, time? Now I'm actually uh, I, I work for a, a magazine so I, mm. I, I find great enjoyment um, writing about all the equestrian disciplines mm. so I write about polo, eventing, show jumping, racing and so still I was, very much close to your yeah, heart then. Yeah. And um, although I don't compete now, I still have a great passion for all the different disciplines. So mm. I obviously go to all the events and uh, watch the winners and watch the people yeah. who don't win and, you know, go and chat to them sometimes when they've had a bad day to give mm -hmm. them the inspiration that, you know, there are bad days, but there are also great days. Do you think um, when people do go into these kind of uh, competitions and stuff, do you think they kind of expect things to run smoothly a lot of the times and they're not mentally prepared for, for competing? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think that, you know, it's, it's like things in life, you know, everything mm -hmm. goes good and then all of a sudden you hit a bad time. Yeah. And it's those times that you've got to be strong. It's those times that you've got to move on with a fresh day and put the past behind and move mm -hmm. on with it and, you know, be successful again whenever it comes round. Okay. And now, Alex, you're listening to all of this advice, so this is what's ahead for you, isn't it? So yeah. tell us about, I know things, I know you're, you're preparing for the, the next Olympics, but yeah. how were things before? Because you were a bit of a naughty boy before, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell us a bit about yeah. that? Um, basically, I grew up in a background whereby my mom, she was a single mom and she had like three of us. Mm -hmm. So basically, things financially like were not that great. So. I had to go to school sometimes without no dinner money whatsoever. Like mm -hmm. many times I see kids buying all the latest gear, I couldn't buy it because my mom just, you know, couldn't afford it knowing that she's got three of us. So yeah. what I used to do is that I used to like still, I used to like do shoplifting and things like that just to literally like get money to like I think, eat. Did you have like any like goals for yourself or like any dream or no, at I the never time you didn't know what you wanted to do? Like, I know sometimes maybe perhaps with you because you probably had that dream from when you were really small. Well you did because you started that fight. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah so I mean you have to have that dream yeah. and, and if you can't get that dream you know it's hard. Yeah. It has to be that you literally have the dream and you follow the dream right. and you know my advice to you is that you're here now and this yeah. is what you want to do yeah. and um, you know you can you can yeah. do it if you if you want it you can you have can. it yeah. okay yeah. so then so tell us briefly a bit more about your background and then how you kind of got that dream for yourself and now you're you're running with it <laughs> okay so then um basically after all that like that's happened it's only like when i started to get involved like in college whereby like the, the dream of like wanting to become an athlete like really kicked in because I basically studied sports in college. So mm. we'll do like a range of like different sports. Okay. So it was basically one um, lesson whereby we had a, a test called the standing long jump whereby participants had to like stand and basically try and jump as far as they can. And But did you know before that what you were really good at or you, you didn't nah, know? No, I didn't yet? have no clue like whatsoever. Really? Like, no, nah, I didn't have no clue. Like, to be honest with you, yeah, I weren't, I weren't really interested in athletics or sports and all of that. The fact is that I went to college, I, I, I done sports because I thought that was like an easy way out because <laughs> A-levels to me was I'm just... I'm sure the training isn't easy now, is it? <laughs> no, it's not easy, but like... <laughs> I didn't really like like A levels that much, yeah. so I thought, you know what, let me just do sports and like see what happens, basically. And then you discovered that you had a bit of a talent. Yeah, I discovered. Tell us about that. Um, yeah, so basically, like what actually happened was that we done like the standing long jump test, and basically I jumped further than everybody else in the class, and mm -hmm. everyone were like so amazed because I've never seen someone that could just you know jump so far from a standing position. So then what happened is that. Um, I had a friend in college that actually did athletics 
and he basically like referred me to an athletic club so I went to the athletic club now and I met the coach for the first time and I remember I was so scared because I thought the coach was going to send me on straight away because I because I thought the coach was going to like look at me and say no way like you can't be good at anything. I obviously thought you were good because <laughs> now you're you're training. Yeah. <laughs> Tell yeah. us about your training now was it like as, as demanding as what? Well? Yeah it's as like well? it's very demanding because like in athletics we got like the winter season whereby that's where you, you do all the work basically so even though it's cold outside sometimes you have to go outside and do long runs and stuff mm. like that and it is painful but in the end Are you it's on a worth specific it. diet you have to eat certain yeah like we have to eat certain things like, we, like <clears throat> basically I'm on a specific diet and also I've got like a psychologist in uni as well that helps in terms of like my sports performance plus mm. my coach that helps as well so it's really really okay. good all right so Emma, when, when, when Alex finds it's like a Big Mac with chips, and I'm sure you do sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I do. Like, to be what advice with you, could you yeah. give him like, to, to, <laughs> to resist that you, temptation? I do actually break the diet plan sometimes. Do you? That's so, not, did you ever break it? <laughs> oh, you do. I have done, but you have to do yeah. it sneaky. So yeah, it's oh, sneaky. Oh, you, like, you, know, like, you know those, you know, like <laughs> once in a while, those one-off. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, how, so what, what advice would you give Alex listening to him now? Because he's obviously just starting and he's got a bit of a way ahead of him now. How, to, how can he stay motivated for the next few years, really? Yeah, the I mean, there's a long everything. time now. Obviously, we're just starting our Olympics, you know, to, mm -hmm. tonight. So yeah. we've, you've got a long time and you've got to stay focused. And, you know, on the days that you feel like you don't want to get out of bed, you have got to get out of bed and you just continue with your thought that you're going to get your dream and, you know, your dream will come true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, the good thing with our squad is that we're literally like an elite squad, so we do, like, all the big competitions in the UK. So I've done some of, like, the big competitions in the UK. For example, the British University Championships, that's mm -hmm. a, a big competition for students. And luckily, that was in the Olympic Stadium, so I literally oh. got to compete there. I got to see... Yeah everything so that was like really good mm -hmm. so the fact wow. that everyone in the group like we're all trained together and our coach John Shepard he's very knowledgeable because he was basically an international athlete himself competed for Great Britain so he's got all the experience and knowledge so basically he just passed it on to us and mm -hmm. We're just doing well. How, how is it now like because I know obviously you came from a hard background yeah. and now did, did things that you're not proud of but now you're actually being able to be an inspiration to youngsters, like people that watch you. Yeah. How does that feel now to it be feels, a positive influence in It feels life? really good because I grew up and I thought to myself, you know what, I'll never be a positive influence to anyone. I grew up thinking I'll probably end up in prison or something like that. But mm. to now like have something that I'm good at and to be able to do it and people watch me and you know look up to me, it just feels really good. It makes me feel like good about myself. Like, wow, I've come like from such a, you know, really bad background, and now mm -hmm. I'm literally making a positive influence. It's really, it feels really great, to be honest. That's wonderful, and I'm sure you've inspired a lot of people, both of you actually, because you know yeah. you both done really well. You're doing really well. <laughs> yeah. And you've done really well. And you're doing lots as well now. So thank you so much, Alex. Emma, Thanks. you're going to be staying with us, aren't you? Because yes, we're going I am. To, you're going to be you. telling us about another something else that you're involved in as well. That's very, very important. But if you want to ask um, any questions, I will open the phone lines. If you want to ask any questions, if you want to ask Emma a question, maybe you can give us a call on 020-7686-6300. You can also visit the website. By the way, all the all the programs, all the shows that you see live, we do actually put them on the website a couple of days afterwards. And also they are on YouTube. So if you want to visit the website, chrissybshow.tv, you can follow us on Facebook as well, The Chrissy B Show, and on Twitter, Chrissy B Show. So we're going to go to a quick break. And then also joining us after the break will be Lisa Marie, who comes on every Wednesday to talk about fashion tips. And she'll be talking about some Olympics fashion. I'm not really sure what that means, but I'm sure she's going to show us something really interesting. So we'll see you after this break. I'm here with Laura, who's the founder of Alvarado Gallery. 
And um, we're here to talk about her special exhibition, the Olympics. So what made you want to feature the Olympics then? Well, we were given um, a set of five silkscreen prints that were um, originally made in the 1970s. So they're 40 years old this mm. year. And they're, they're just beautiful. So that kind of thought, right, we've got to, we've got to do something with them. Mm. I mean, the silkscreen prints, they, each of them features um, a different athlete. So there's some doing weightlifting, some doing shot put, some doing high jump. And then we found a lot of parallels between an athlete and an artist because, you know, we're coming from a visual creative point of view, but you've got to have that discipline, you've got to have that kind of space in your mind to kind of feel inspired and you've got to be really open like an athlete does. So you said that you sort of cover different themes sometimes at the moment it's the Olympics. What other ones have you done recently then? Well, um, our debut show was entitled Pain at the Dentist and that looked at um, people's endurance of pain mm -hmm. and the fact that you don't have to anaesthetise it. You can go through it, endure it and grow. Mm -hmm. And we've kind of shown that, you know, beauty can come out of painful experiences. What sort of literature has inspired you with some of these pieces? Well, I've got a book the Intuitive Body, and that's by Wendy Palmer. And I'll just read you a small quote from that, which was, great athletes keep surpassing themselves and each other. Their quest to achieve the next level or possibility becomes a way of life. For many athletes, this strength of spirit is represented in their willingness to stay interested and in their abilities to be open to many possibilities. This kind of spirit leads to a life where practice and training are a natural and integrated way of being. If you're an artist, you don't switch off from your job. You don't kind of come, you know, put down your briefcase and watch the telly. You're always kind of being inspired. You're always kind of linking ideas together. And um, I, I suppose it's the way of an athlete as well. You're, what you put into your body, everything's conditioning you for your goal. We've got here um, some beautiful photographs um, by a social documentary photographer called Catherine Green. Um, she's based in Walthamstow, North East London. And she went all around the country um, finding Olympians from 1948 and then she interviewed them, photographed them, got to know them. So all of them are holding photographs of themselves in their Olympic Games. So what's these pictures over here? Can you tell us a bit about them? Yeah, um, these are by a, um, an illustrator and artist called Natalie Guinamard. She was chosen as one of the artists to make the Olympic Royal Mail Olympic stamp sets. Um, this one in the middle was the one that was chosen. When's the actual exhibition going to be live to the public? It'll be open to the public from Wednesday the 8th through till Sunday the 12th. Um, we'll be here in, at the Oak Studio um, and we'll have it just to ourselves with all the beautiful artwork showing on the walls. Okay, that's great. You can check out the website chrissyb.tv for more information. Thank you, Barbara. And I keep saying it's Wednesday. I'm sorry, people. It just, it's Friday. <laughs> anyway, I'm still joined by Emma Jane Brown, who won the Ladies' National Championship of Great Britain at a young age. She's campaigning to make the sport safer, as there are several deaths every year. To this end, she has created a range of protective equestrian clothing for kids from 2 to 16 years of age. And we also have our fashionista, Lisa Murray, joining us to share some Olympics fashion. But first, we do have a caller who has a question for Emma. Hello, good evening. Hello. Hiya. How are My you? My question is, yeah. what's been the most inspirational achievement of your life? Okay, my most, uh, my, that one is one that I did when uh, I won the Queen Elizabeth Trophy at the Royal International Horse Show. Um, that was the best, best thing I could ever have won. Wow. Yeah. Okay, did you want to ask anything else? That's it, thanks, yeah. that's lovely. Okay, <laughs> thanks very much for your call. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I don't think we have time to take any more callers because we've got a bit to get through still. So let's start with, with Lisa Marie first. Just can you give us a few tips quickly? On what yeah, you OK. Yeah. Well, what I did this week, or uh, what we did, was just like looking at the different colours of like the flags and main representatives mm -hmm. and what you can actually wear if you're not maybe so interested in sport but a way to get yourself in that Olympic to spirit. pretend you're in that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. So we've put a few links together based on uh -huh. some of the most popular flags and countries mm -hmm. and uh, put some looks together so okay. um, if we can show the first one. Red, white and blue. The so many countries that are actually 
have those colours in their flags from mm-hmm. France, USA, obviously Great Britain, um, Russia, so many. So these are the looks that we've just come up with. Um, in the middle there, we've got a navy palazzo pant from Dorothy Perkins that's £22. Mm-hmm. Um, and teaming that with a white T-shirt from Oasis at £25. Wedges, love them. They're lovely and high, but obviously a bit more comfortable if you're not used to wearing yes. high heels yep. from mm-hmm. Aldo at 44 98 <laughs> And then depending on which way you go, in the Union Jack bag was from um, Debenhams, Red Herring at Debenhams at £25. And some American flag earrings from New Look, only £3.99. Very nice. So <laughs> whichever way you want to do it, whichever yeah. country you want to be patriotic to, that's the one okay. to go for. Or <laughs> you change according to whichever one's exactly. doing really well. Exactly, just add the flag of whichever yeah. one. There you go. And our next look... Uh, ..is based on... The Jamaican flag. Jamaica is going to be one of the most, um, I think, anticipated countries for like things like the 100 metre final. Mm. Um, and so this that we've got the dresses from Vera Moda and it's 99.95 and it's a silk two in one. Mm-hmm. Um, teamed with a yellow belt from Amazon, who if people don't know, they don't just do um, books <laughs> and video games or yeah. that, they do do clothes too. Mm-hmm. So that belt's from there at 11.99. Um, the sandals uh, from Nine West, £49. And that gorgeous bag is £60 from Karen Millen. Okay. A really good investment. All right, so you've got a couple more to, to share with us, haven't you? Yeah, there's but before, one more but there. before, let's just go back to Emma. No so you've also um, released a, a, your own line of, of safety wear. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, I've, um, it's taken many years and I've designed a small range of clothing for children to wear when they're riding. Mm-hmm. Um, they can also wear it if they're in the park, they're on skateboards or even on bikes. Um, it's quite trendy, it's not heavy, it's not unsightly and the padding is built into the material. Mm-hmm. And um, I've just got one, one yeah. or two pieces here with me. Mm-hmm. Um, if I can show you, these are, these are actually jodhpurs but they could be worn as leggings yeah. for, for whoever. And um, the, the padding is here which is built in and it's here for really the coccyx, which yeah. is where a lot of... I was just saying earlier, I think this would be good for me to do my, my sit-ups with yeah. <laughs> sometimes I get pain there. So. Um, yeah. And it, it, what, what is so good about it is that the, the more heat they get, so the warmer mm. that the child gets, the more the foam protects and also moulds to them. Mm-hmm. So um, it's not unsightly, it's not heavy, mm-hmm. and it's just there really as a prevention. And it gives mums the extra peace of mind, doesn't it? Exactly, as well? yeah. yeah. Um, I wish I'd had this for, for when I was riding because that would definitely have been in my <laughs> job. Cause. And then yeah. um, one of the other pieces is a denim jacket, the good old. As you know, that just looks like a normal, normal jacket, doesn't Den it? Yeah. Levi jacket mm-hmm. as such that really nowadays everybody wears yeah. a denim jacket. Whatever yeah. age you are, you can wear, mm-hmm. you know, wear it well, what with actually anything. Um, so the protection is actually the padding is built in here in the elbows, mm-hmm. and uh, obviously in the back. I mean, if you fell off on your bike or yeah. on a frame, you know, in the park or anything, you have got something there. And as I say, you know, it's it's not unsightly. You wouldn't know. Yeah, no, that you can't see anything, can you? Here yeah. or anywhere. And really, if the child, you know, does go riding or whatever, and then gets, you know, they don't want to do anything in that sport again, it's still mm-hmm. universally used. You can still wear it to the shops. You know, you yeah. can wear it out with your friends. So yeah, that's my sort of new. And it's good that it's it. in such a way that a child wouldn't reject it. Because yeah. I think that's the problem yeah. as well, isn't it? That they wouldn't want to wear typical safety gear because yeah. they're scared of maybe what their friends are going to say. But yeah. something like that, they can wear and still look. And get trendy. Yeah, yeah and, <laughs> and, and also, you know, I, I have been in the sport, you know, with riding for many, many years. Mm-hmm. And it is a sport that, you know, is, is quite dangerous. Yes, it is. You're on an animal that doesn't say it's going to run off or it's going to mm. do something. At random, it can just do anything when it yeah. wants. Um, and the same on a bike, you know, if a child's on a bike or flying along on the skateboard, it's just something that's there mm-hmm. to prevent any yeah. little accident or something that you, you know, might fall off and do. Um, and it's really, I say, it's action clothes for action kids, because all yeah. kids all want kids action. All kids are action, yeah. <laughs> and all kids <laughs> are all have action, yeah, all so that's my sort okay, of line great. with it. 
Okay, and I know you also um, support a charity, which we're going to speak about in just a moment. Lisa, can you just give us maybe one more? Yeah, or I can one, give you one more. Look. How many do you have? How many oh, this has been the last one. Oh, that's okay then. Really <laughs> easy for you. Perfect timing then. All right, go on. So this look is kind of based around like um, the Brazil flag, mm -hmm. also like um, some of the Caribbean countries, like Saint Kitts and Barbados. They all kind of feature like yellows, blues, some of them a bit of greens. Yeah. So we've got wow. this <laughs> gorgeous. Um, Print, uh, sorry, I lace bib dress. dress. Mm -hmm. um, it's from Almari at House of Fraser, seventy pounds. Really that. good investment. Mm -hmm. Beautiful shoes, bit of a nice platform heel there. And um, they're from Miss Selfridge at forty-two pounds. And this bag, um, I actually find it's, it's a bespoke bag. It's made by um, a designer, just like kind of one-off pieces. It's one hundred and seven pounds, but that is a teak um, case. Mm -hmm. And then we've, because uh, it's got the peacock kind of detail on there as yeah. well. So it's £107 from Botica.com. Wow, okay, that's lovely. Yeah. So if you want to look gorgeous during the Olympics, there you go, some nice tips from Lisa Marie there. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Okay. So, Emma, tell us about the charity as well that, that you're involved with. Yeah, I, um, I'm an executive trustee of a charity, uh, The Soldiering Arm, which is for the, all the soldiers mm -hmm. uh, coming back from Afghanistan and everything. So that's a great charity I work with. I'm also... Um, very much involved with riding for the disabled and uh, I attended the national championships last weekend where the 780 riders all over the country came and um, I, I just remember you know driving there thinking gosh you know it's Saturday and it was raining and thinking of all my issues that I've got to sort out you know over the weekend mm -hmm. and when you get there and you, you go round and you see and you watch these incredible children and their families deal with their disabilities and also what they conquer um, with riding and doing all the different things on the day, you really realise that um, they are such an inspiration yeah. to, to all of us. And it was just an incredible day of watching them just do things that you would never think they could do. It makes you think like your own problems seem very trivial. And it does. And really that day I didn't think of anything else which mm. was amazing because I just focused on them and yeah. had such great pleasure of presenting the prizes and the rosettes to them at the end of the day mm -hmm. to see their little faces come and get a red or whatever color rosette mm. and a medal and the parents face was just fantastic mm -hmm. it's a wonderful charity okay and how can people support it if they want to? they can do volunteering um, mm -hmm. there's different riding centers all around the country the good thing about it is that, you know, you don't have to know anything about ponies or anything else. You can put yourself forward to be a volunteer. And um, it's just a, it's a very inspiration, as I say before, yeah. charity for all people to come and help. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it's just it's a great one. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa Marie, once again. Thank you to all my guests. And we have, unfortunately, reached the end of the programme for today. But I do hope, you know, you've really benefited from all the advice that, you, that you've listened to today. And also, I think one, one of the underlying things that will stick with me is that if you really want something, you're going to do everything to, to get there. And you have to really have a passion. And also, everyone has their bad days, right, as we mm -hmm. said. So don't think because you have a bad day, not just in sports, in any area of your life, you know, you've got your, I don't know, aspiring to be a business person or you want to, to do something with your life. And you hit that, that bad day. Don't worry. Everyone goes through it. Just pick yourself up and keep going. I believe in you. And I'm sure that you believe in yourself as well. Monday show, we'll be looking at how do people from different countries have made a life for themselves here in the UK and whether it's been difficult or welcoming. So that's going to be quite an interesting show. But before we go, let's just leave you with this YouTube funny video and we see you again on Monday. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Bye-bye for now. Thank you. Ever funky. <laughs> One, two, three, four.